Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City had everything going for it. A great concept set in a beloved universe with a rich, compelling canon to draw from. As it were, however, this 8-player, team-based shooter amounts to far less than the sum of its parts. There's a distinct difference between a franchise offshoot and a franchise bastardization. Unfortunately, Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City can only be defined as the latter. ORC puts players behind the scenes of the initial outbreak in Raccoon City. You play as a member of the Umbrella Security Service, tasked with destroying all evidence of Umbrella's involvement in the catastrophe. It's a brilliant concept, one that could have made for an extremely badass story and shed light on these well-known Resident Evil events. Unfortunately, all of this potential is squandered by some strange choices and truly terrible execution. One of the worst parts of ORC is its complete lack of atmosphere, which is simply unforgivable for a Resident Evil game. The set pieces are bland and forgettable, and everything down to the music fails to capture the RE universe or create any amount of tension. The story offers no insight into Umbrella's actions, and its flow and progression are both uninteresting and nonsensical. Sure, Resident Evil is known for its cheesy and out-there plotlines, but they're at least usually interesting and bolstered by memorable characters you really care about. While you can play as Leon, Hunk, Jill, and other recognizable characters in the Heroes multiplayer mode, during the main campaign you're stuck taking control of one of a handful of bland, faceless USS members with absolutely no personality or story arc to speak of. As is, it's impossible to care about what's going on in the already paper-thin story. This is not what we signed up for! Come on! And now we come to the only part of Operation Raccoon City that is effectually horrifying, the gameplay. The AI of both your fellow team members and the enemies is simply atrocious. While it's preferable to play with your friends, I was still stunned by how useless the computer-controlled teammates were. Not only are you unable to control their actions in any way, but their every move is unreasonable and downright idiotic. From running into empty rooms you've already cleared, to constantly walking into obvious trip mines, to finding surprising and frustrating ways to get themselves killed, your team members offer no real backup or assistance. For a team-based shooter, this is absolutely unacceptable. Watch those trip mines! The enemy AI is no better. There were literally countless times where a hunter would jump in front of me, wave its arms, then dash away or jump off the edge of something for no reason. When you have to chase down a hunter and practically beg it to attack you, you know something's not quite right. As if that weren't enough, the aiming is downright spotty. Blind firing at times was just completely broken, and enemy damage is somewhat random. Sometimes you can unload an entire clip into a licker's face and they won't flinch, other times a couple of bullets do the trick. The melee attack is also way overpowered. You can practically hack and slash your way through parts of the game, killing that trademark RE suspense. ORC's multiplayer modes don't help much either, as they suffer from the same problems as single player. Namely, poor enemy AI, a lack of atmosphere, and an environment that is frustrating to interact with. The only difference is at least you have a companion around to share in your pain and assure you it will all be over soon. In addition to the ability to play through the main campaign with friends, ORC has four multiplayer modes in all, each of which supports up to eight players. There's a team deathmatch, capture the flag, a mercenaries type survival mode, and heroes, a four-on-four -four match which lets you play as notable RE characters such as Leon and Jill. The number of play options would be great if the rest of the multiplayer experience were passable, but much like the rest of ORC, poorly thought out gameplay mechanics, bad level design, and a total lack of atmosphere bring it down. What's the objective? Intercept Birkin and secure the G-Virus. Given the huge amount of potential the developers of Operation Raccoon City had to work with, it's disappointing how little of it was actually realized. There were numerous times I was literally surprised by the mention of the name William Birkin, or the familiar sound of picking up an herb, having long forgotten that this was supposedly an RE game I was playing. In the end, Operation Raccoon City is little more than a poor man's SOCOM, and a destitute man's Resident Evil. For more on Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City, head on over to IGN.com. <laughs>